Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today we're going to be talking about Tim Keller and how Tim Keller died and exactly what should be his legacy. Should we be eulogizing Tim Keller as believers? And I'm not talking about saying, hey, I benefited from this teaching. I'm talking about saying, hey, this is a hero of the faith. This is a prominent theologian who we should celebrate upon dying. That's the type of eulogizing that I'm talking about. And I'm kind of disturbed to see a lot of conservative Christians out there eulogizing someone who's obviously a false teacher. He, is, he was a wolf in sheep's clothing, and he made that very clear in his last years on earth. No one would say on the conservative Christian side that Tim Keller had a good ending. But I do believe that because of sanctification, a good ending is indicative of having faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, those who do not have a good ending show evidence of not being sanctified. And Tim Keller's ending is nothing short of horrendous. So we're going to be talking about that and we're going to be examining the legacy of Tim Keller. This is probably going to be the last thing I ever do on Tim Keller. So we're just going to give it a nice send off and then I won't talk about him anymore, hopefully. So, uh, but first I want to let you know, Evangelical Dark Web is a Christian news gathering and commentary ministry. Um, and Tim Keller's uh, death is huge news for obvious reasons. And that's why we're talking about it. And you can support us over at evangelicaldarkweb.org slash join. That's our Patreon like system. Uh, but you know, the least you can do is like the video and also subscribe to the channel. If you are new, those help with the magical YouTube algorithms that don't like promoting naturally, uh, people who tell the truth. So, you know, false teacher, Tim Keller dies. I ran that headline because he's a false teacher and he died. And I'm not going to pretend that he was not a false teacher. One of the things I wanted to do when I set out to do Christian news was to apply discernment to Christian news. And if I were to say anything less than that, I don't think I would be consistent in my longstanding position that Tim Keller is a false teacher. So the key line that I want to read in this is the end. Um, so, discerning Christians have raised concerns about specific aspects of his teachings, such as his views on biblical inerrancy, the nature of salvation, and his approach to social justice issues. Evangelical Dark Web concluded that Tim Keller was a false teacher. Moreover, John Harris of Conversations That Matter did an entire podcast series to this end. You can check out his series. I believe I've seen every single one of those videos that John Harris did. There might be a couple I haven't seen, uh, but I, I, it, it's impressive the amount of work that he did. And he based it off of a book that was written a long time ago in the sp span of Tim Keller's decline. Uh, Tim Keller was ex routinely exposed in Enemies Within the Church, the documentary that came out a few years ago. Uh, for his advancement of the social justice gospel, that is a false gospel. Almost every battle facing the modern church, Keller was on the wrong side of, including homosexuality, critical race theory, branch covidianism, and theistic evolution. Those are pr four big issues. Like, theistic evolution, you know, obviously we're not in the 1990s, so it would have been a bigger issue a couple decades ago. But it's still a pretty big issue, and it's pretty bad to be wrong, and as wrong as Tim Keller was on that issue. Tim Keller is not known to posit what he actually believed about the creation account, but what he allows to be ex an acceptable belief is beyond heretical. It is beyond the pale, and to be honest, let's just be blunt, if believing in theistic evolution makes you a theological liberal, point blank, you, you've crossed the line into theological liberalism. So you, you can't really uphold the uh, inerrancy, sufficiency of scripture and believe in Darwinian evolution. You can't do it. So you got to pick one. And Tim Keller obviously picked theistic evolution. He was part of the Biologus ministry, which is Francis Collins ministry. That dude's a mass murderer, by the way. And again, Biblical men don't praise Francis Collins. He's a false teacher and he's a murderer. So you don't praise people like that. He's not a Daniel working in the government space. So, and then obviously, 
uh, branch convenientism was huge because he, you know, defended how his church did va- vaccine apartheid. And he was big into promoting that. Again, uh, he was wrong on every major issue that's faced the church, at, you know, in his lifetime. His ministry, the Gospel Coalition, is, the, is a behemoth at the forefront of leading the church astray. So that's something that we also got to break down because Tim Keller is responsible in part, him and Don Carson. I'm not letting Don Carson off the hook. Uh, Tim Keller is responsible for the content at the Gospel Coalition. And the Gospel Coalition is routinely promoted liberal content. They've routinely been trying to lead the church astray. And that is the fruit of Tim Keller. You want to talk about being a fruit inspector? The fruit of Tim Keller is the Gospel Coalition. The fruit of Tim Keller is Redeemer Presbyterian Church, NYC. And the fruit of Tim Keller is the last couple of years of his ministry, in which he has made it clear that his legacy, rather than the books and teachings that were a benefit to many believers, many actual believers, his legacy is one of theological liberalism and compromise with the world and being wrong on every major issue facing the church. That's who Tim Keller was. So, uh, in 2022, February 2022, I published this verdict on Tim Keller, basically labeling him a false teacher. The verdict was he's an enemy within the church, in part a reference to the documentary, but also a reference to the fact that Tim Keller's on the wrong side of every issue. Every hot-button issue facing the church, the social justice gospel, uh, evo- Darwinian evolution, he's on the wrong side of these issues. Branch Covidianism on the wrong side of that issue. All these false religious movements, he's on the other side. He's not some believer that was led astray. Tim Keller has been woke and liberal for the entirety of his ministry. It's not even remotely debatable once you look at the history of Tim Keller. And I recommend checking out John Harris's content on this because he shows just how liberal he was and has been the entire time. So uh, one of the, some people are unaware that Tim Keller is compromised on the issue of homosexuality. Again, Tim Keller made that clear earlier this year. Sorry, now this is actually 2022. My bad. April, 2022. It just feels like it's been in the last year. When he promoted Greg Johnson's book, Greg Johnson is the pariah of the PCA and Greg Johnson is a side B theology. He uh, is the dude who hosted the first Revoice conference. That's who Greg Johnson is. He's a gay pastor in Missouri. So Greg, and this is Tim Keller promoting his book. Uh so Greg Johnson, still time to care, provides a good history and critique of older ex gay of the older ex gay movement, which is a form of prosperity gospel. It is important that we know its history in light of its implosion and ask now what. So again, that's what a theological liberal would say. There, there's no reason to reject that history, and there's no re- because first of all, it's the premises of rejecting it and saying that this was bad are based in lies of harm and uh, uh, just the idea of calling uh, the ability of God to take away sin from people a prosperity gospel. Are you kidding? So there's a lot of theological errors with that. But this is Tim Keller being compromised on homosexuality. We can look at, obviously, Tim Keller was very compromised on uh, branch Covenantism, and he was very woke. These are all things known. And, you know, just... Read this article that I did on Tim Keller as a false teacher, and if you want the deep dive on him and theistic evolution. But in any case, I'm not going to eulogize Tim Keller. Uh, he was a false teacher, and there's a reason why he was wrong on every single issue uh, that the church had to deal with in his lifetime. It's because he's not on our side, he's not on the side of the church. He's been an enemy of the church, an enemy within the church even. And his ministry, the Gospel Coalition, was corrupted under his watch. I would argue it's probably always been a bad ministry. So that's all I got to say about that. Let's 
pretty much the last I'm going to hopefully talk about Tim Keller, you know, in detail uh, on his own. So uh, if you like the com- uh, the commentary, subscribe to the channel, to the podcast if you're new. Otherwise, leave a comment below about what you think about what I think, and I will catch you on the next one.